Hello you. This is a video response to a uh, video by Forever World Films called Fighting for Suicide. Good morning there, Amanda. I'm just, I'm thinking about suicide and I think it's a good topic and obviously there's lots of taboos around that topic, but I think it is worth talking about, I really do. And, uh, yeah, I'll just start to give us some account of my own experiences of, 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 of thinking about those things. I haven't thought seriously about su uh, my own suicide for years and years and years, but I certainly have in the past. And I've certainly been depressed enough to, um, yeah, to want not to be alive anymore, if not to actively uh, commit to that process by taking action myself. Certainly there was a period of time in my early 20s when I was extremely depressed. You know, my life was in, in shards, it was one of those kind of things. And um, yeah, for, for weeks, if not months, every single morning I woke up and the first thought that came to my mind was, shit, I'm still awake. I didn't die in the night. Um, yeah, that was the first thing. I mean, I never actually, well, I can't say I didn't think about actively committing suicide at the time myself. I guess I must have done, but um, I didn't. I just kept stumbling through the days, falling to bed at night and wake up again with that same thought. Why am I still here? Um, so I have, I don't know if that's anything like what your experience is, but I certainly do remember that very, very well indeed. Um, I do also remember, not, this isn't like a road to Damascus moment or anything like that, but I do remember the um, a kind of dawning awareness that I could commit suicide if I chose to. And I did quite a bit of research into it actually. It was, uh, this wasn't at the same time as this period I've just mentioned, but in a different uh, <laughs> period of, 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 of unhappiness. I did do some research into this and did even assemble the materials of, 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 of taking myself out. So I used to have quite a, quite a complex suicide kit knocking around the house. And uh, I do remember the feeling of, uh, as I say, this, this quite a, uh, a significant transformative almost moment of having, of, of, of having the knowledge and, and even at that, at that time having the equipment to, to do this if I wanted to. And it was, it was Weirdly enough, it was a really freeing moment for me. Um, just the knowledge that I could st step step away from the vehicle at any point if I, if things just got too rough made it much easier for some reason. I'm not I'm not saying that it's uh, that's for everyone, and I certainly wouldn't advise people who are regularly suicidal to keep a loaded gun at their bedside. But um, but that kind of thing worked for me actually. Um, and I, and I still think that, and it's been, and it, it, I'm not sure this is exactly true or not, but this is how it feels. It, it certainly kind of freed me up to do a lot of other things, I feel. You know, I've, I've got very little self-consciousness these days. Um, you know, just even stupid things like posting the naked videos on YouTube or, 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 or saying things to people, making foolish commitments to, to projects or to people or to that kind of stuff, you know, I, I've, I've got very little fear in those things anymore. And um, and I think part of that comes from the, what it, to me it feels like a deeply internalised sense that it doesn't have to be permanent. None of this has to be permanent. I can always just, just close the book. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel. And the fact that and that's, and the fact that I've had that as part of the backdrop to my knowledge of how the world works for so long now, years, 20 years at least, probably more, 25. The fact that I've had that, um, it, 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 I don't know, I just feel like I live life a little bit lightly, you know what I mean? I, that's, that's my feeling now. I, I feel very temporary. Um, and I feel the world is very temporary in, a most, in its most intimate way, really. Um, so I just, I just, as I say, I just feel like I'm, like I can wear the world a bit more lightly, which, which, um, I suppose the, it, it could be read as a, as a as slightly more, um, oh, I don't know. It, it, I still feel like I'm as politically committed and as, as personally committed as I ever was. But um, that's that's all I can say on that. Really, it's it's just that. The other thing that your video prompted in me was thinking about. Propaganda, really. I suppose it's because you're wearing that shirt, which is a kind of—it's um, not—it's it, not exactly propaganda, but it's, a, it's part of a, a kind of activist process that you're involved in there, which is fine. Um, and I'm relating—I'm thinking about that in relation to your expressed 
fears to do with dying, fear the fear of death. And then you qualify that by saying it's not actually death you're afraid of. You're not frightened of the darkness and the quiet after death. You're frightened of the process, something like that. You know, it's just all these terrors associated with death, and they're unfounded and they're weird and they're. You know, I don't know. They're just hard to comprehend, aren't they? Really. But I think a lot of that comes from our, as Damien Hirst said, the inability to, what is it, the, uh, the incomprehensibility of death in the mind of someone living or something like that. Damien Hirst, the artist, who got the shark in formaldehyde. The impossibility of death in the mind of someone living. It's that there's something very, very terrifying about the impossibility of death. Um, but the, you know, the, the feeling that I can't imagine myself being dead. That, that in itself is, is kind of terrifying, quite apart from any pain or suffering that might lead up to that moment. I guess because we associate death with darkness and darkness is a bit scary to us on a kind of atavistic level and, and uh, silence and inaction is kind of scary to us on a, again on an atavistic level, you know, we're primates who spent most of evolutionary history frightened of the dark and frightened of, of being trapped passive, passively caught, you know. So yeah, I'm not surprised. So I, th I think we just, maybe, maybe we need a bit of a propaganda exercise. Maybe we need better metaphors for death, or better understandings of what death is. And I say metaphors because it's one of those things that we can't understand literally. I mean, most of life we can't understand literally. But we've got really good metaphors for life. But a lot of the good metaphors for, for being dead aren't very good. And a lot of the best metaphors for being dead are associated with religions, and we don't want to believe those anymore. Um, you know, because for good reason, you know, because people take them seriously. But a lot of the religious metaphors, if they were recognised as just poetic metaphors and not as real descriptions of a physical afterlife, would be fine. You know, the whole idea of entering eternity, for example. I like, I really like the idea. Professor Antal made a video recently. He's made a few videos about this in the past, about the relationship between kind of sentience and will and consciousness, and how that's bound up with our understanding of time. You know, we are, I think he's used the phrase time bound at various points, that we are cre creatures who are hyper aware of our own position, place in time, in a way that many animals probably aren't. And because we can frame time in language and we can, we can have remorse about the past and uh, talk about that and have uh, understandings of that and we can project into the future and do various things with that, simulations of what futures might be and engage in things like hope and, and dread. Um, so, you know, so our, a lot of our sentience is bound up with time, but when you're dead, you know, you're not bound up with time anymore, and, uh, and completely literally. So, um, so you do kind of enter eternity at the point of death, which isn't bad, you know, that's some religions use that kind of phrase. They, they associate with cloudy, God-ridden places, but, um, but the idea of, you know, not dying, but just kind of entering eternity. I'm just stepping outside of time and entering eternity now. I quite like that. So maybe those, maybe the generation of poetic metaphors to describe what death is like to make it seem less, less intimidating, less, less like stepping away from this little campfire of life that we huddle around and head out towards the darkness where the beasts and the wild things are, you know, because that's a bit what death feels like. And, and less like... Um, a kind of passive lying down and more like a, an active engagement with the flow and the energy of the wider universe. You know, whatever, whatever works really. Anyway, that's that really. Yeah, but thanks for the video, I enjoyed that. Stranger, why did I enjoy it? It's a strange thing to enjoy, but I did.